Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Digital Real Estate Industry Trends and Their Impact on Your Business. My name is Anu Shaw, and I will be your moderator. Joining us today are Jim DeCatano and Kevin Kinderman. Jim is the Director of Financial Services at CSC, with a primary focus in electronic recording and related real estate services. Jim oversees national accounts, strategic partnerships, and digital commerce activities. He also plays a key role in our product development and market growth initiatives, contributing significantly to the 270% growth of CSC's recording business since joining CSC in 2012. Kevin is the Director of Sales for CSC's Real Estate Business Unit and is based in Wilmington, Delaware. He manages our nationwide e-recording efforts for government recording offices and document submitters. And with that, let's welcome Jim and Kevin. Thanks, Anu. Thank you, Anu. And thank you, everybody, for joining us this afternoon. This is Jim Degatano, and uh, Kevin and I will be taking you through the webinar today. Uh, very much appreciate your participation. So um, today we are going to be talking about um, the significant changes and advancements that have taken place in the real estate industry um, with specific focus on digital mortgages, e-closing as a subset of that e-notarization, and then lastly, e-recording. Uh, and then we'll move into a Q&A session. So uh, I'm based in the Chicago area, and Kevin is based uh, in Wilmington, Delaware, and works out of our headquarters there. So uh, Kevin, uh, give us a little outline of who CSC is. Sure, you got it. Thanks, Jim. Um, so CSC has been in business since 1899. Uh, we've been a leader for, for business, legal, financial services, really worldwide. Uh, and today we even do business with 90% of the Fortune 500 companies. Um, the two CSC founders were attorneys uh, that were actually instrumental in developing incorporation laws. Um, and uh, another little piece of info is we're, we're a private corporation with over 2,500 employees. And uh, as Jim had said, him being in, in uh, Illinois and, and me here in Delaware, um, CSC does business um, and has employees in more than a dozen, count, uh, dozen countries and in all 50 states. You'll see our clients work with us in many different ways. We, we provide services to clients all shapes and sizes um, and different verticals and industries. Um, we really go by the tagline of, of where the business behind the business. Um, and related to uh, the e-closing and digital mortgage uh, advancements, we also work with the top lenders in the country and, and the majority of the top 200 financial institutions uh, with both their commercial and residential groups. So um, we're in a unique position where we've provided services for quite quite a long while to these larger corporations that are now taking a, a position in some of the things that we'll be talking today, uh, specific to electronic mortgages, uh, the e-closing process, and uh, what we see coming down the pike. So, okay, so uh, let's let's talk about digital mortgages. Um, so, um, interestingly, uh, the first, I guess, quote unquote, digital mortgage was done back in the year 2000. Um, there was sort of an experimental mortgage transaction done uh, where there was an e-closing with uh, e-signatures uh, e and e-notarization, um, but it was kind of a one-time thing, and then uh, the industry kind of quieted down and so um, on digital mortgage, and so it's. It's really taken us the last uh, 18 years to, to ramp up to where we are today. Um, but when people talk about digital mortgage, they're talking about uh, a, mortgage, a mortgage that encompasses the entire life cycle of the loan, starting with the loan application, moving into loan processing, um, digital underwriting of the loan, um, e-closing, and then uh, delivering an electronic loan package to an investor. So are we there yet? Uh, not all the way. Um, some of the parts of that process have been around for a while. Some are newer. Some are just now being adopted. 
and uh, some are being done just in very small amounts, and we'll talk about those things as we move forward here. Um, but the industry has polled home buyers to see exactly what they're looking for uh, in, a, in the home buying process. And home buyers have responded that they want speed, they want convenience, they want transparency, meaning they don't want the mortgage process to be a mystery. They kind of want to know where things stand. And they want, to, uh, they want to know that it's secure, that their information isn't going to get out to places and people that they don't want to have it. And lastly, they do want to have some personal interaction with the experts that are taking them through this process. Um, on the same token, lenders want many of the same things. Um, they want speed, um, they want accuracy, they want their loans to be compliant uh, with industry standards and, and guidelines and requirements. That's very important. They want to reduce costs, and they want to be able to leverage data in a more efficient manner. So let's look at this in a little bit more detail. Um, this, this is... Uh, this is really the chain. This outlines the chain of the digital mortgage process. And really it begins with a realtor and the home buyer. And as many of you have seen, um, for a long time now, property listings have been online. Um, you can look at line on houses, you can take a virtual tour. Um, uh, all of the pertinent information about the house is online. And uh, you can even communicate with realtors um, online. And then we come to real estate contracts, and I actually had kind of an eye-opening experience. I had not bought or refinanced a house in quite some time, but my daughter bought a house um, about two years ago. And um, she went right from the, you know, the property listing to executing the purchase agreement online with electronic signatures and then handling the earnest money um, through uh, an online electronic application, uh, which linked in <clears throat> the selling real estate agent, the list, uh, well, I should say the listing agent, the selling agent, I guess that would be more accurately called the buyer's agent, and then the buyer and the seller. So I, th I thought that was pretty cool. That particular application was called Dot Loop. From there, um, there are many portals that <clears throat> home buyers can make a, an online loan application. So they can uh, do data input to take the application and then that uh, data will move into a lender's um, loan origination system. And it's from the loan origination system that the lender can really start the digital process. Um, the first thing that happens is that uh, the loan disclosures are generated and sent to the borrower electronically and then you move into loan processing. And this is where I think there's been quite a, re a lot of recent advancement. Um, you know, it wasn't that long ago, and, and it's still pretty common today, that to verify income and employment and assets, you would send out VOEs and VODs and collect bank statements. Um, but there's new um, source data systems out there that the lenders can connect with or they can um, uh, connect with these source uh, data systems and they can verify income and employment and assets and even property value. Um, you know, you're, they're still doing uh, field inspections, but um, a lot of the evaluation of the property, verifying um, the property value can be done through data sources. And then we move into loan underwriting. Um, and as many of you know, Fannie and Freddie have had their automated underwriting systems around since the late 1990s, um, desktop underwriter and loan prospector. Um, so those um, electronic or digital underwriting has been in place um, for at least 20 years now. Um, but what is relatively new is e-notes. Um, e-notes are something that um, Danny and Freddie and um, MERS Corp work together on, um, and this is where um, the note, rather than being executed as a paper document, can be executed electronically as a smart document, and both Danny and Freddie um, accept them, and uh, their use is actually growing quite rapidly as they're gaining acceptance, but with, both with 
lenders, and also with investors. And then that brings us to e-closings. Um, e-closings has debatably been maybe the, the most challenging aspect of a digital mortgage, um, but we are starting to see them grow. And for a variety of reasons, which we're going to um, talk about more as we move the, through the presentation here. But an e-closing requires um, acceptance by states and counties, and um, you have to have systems to do it, and you have to have the right framework in place to make sure that they're valid and enforceable and acceptable. So uh, I'm going to move it to Kevin now, where he's going to address e-recording electronic signatures. Yeah, thanks, Jim. So some of these these steps in the process that you've talked about, um, some have been in place, you know, to to have occurred digitally or through some electronic means, and and some haven't. Um, you know, just to share what you said, e closing has probably been the most challenging portion of this fully electronic process. But um, what naturally happens after the closing is the recording of the documents, and for a long while. E-recording seemed new, um, but now with practically two decades under our belt where electronic recording has been the real standard, um, we've received reports back from various county recording offices throughout the country that their recording percentages, 80% um, of what they record is done so electronically. And it's such a wide variety of different types of submitters. It's real estate firms, it's financial institutions, uh, it's energy companies, it's contractors, it's homeowners associations. Um, it really has proven that this part of the full e-process, you know, e-recording, that it really is the standard now. It's not the exception. So that's exciting for it to have been, uh, for it to have made so much progress that it can uh, help us all feel a little more comfortable with adopting other e-technologies because it's well proven. Uh, and then finally, the, the point here that we can hit on is electronic signatures. So federal legislations in place through the eSign Act and, and UETA, the Electronic Transactions Act. And all, all that these do is at a federal level, they provided an ability to uh, equate a wet signature um, that it could be done so now through an electronic means, that that electronic signature holds the same weight, holds the same enforceability as one that was done, you know, through a, a wet pen, right, wet ink. So those are some cool advancements that we can all feel uh, comfortable with that, look, while certain pieces of this digital mortgage process might feel new, there's quite a few elements within it that have been around for, for quite a while and we can feel good about. Uh, and finally, um, we know that the CFPB, they've even endorsed e-recording. Uh, the American Land Title Association, they've listed e-recording as one of their uh, top pillars of best practices, one of their top seven pillars. So it, it's all uh, information and progress that we can feel good that will hopefully give us even more momentum to keep adopting technology and processes. So Jim, I'll, um, I'll kick it back to you and if you can kind of help us dive into, you know, the industry becoming more data-driven and using electronic means. Thanks, Kevin. Yeah, I mean, the bottom line is that um, with these changes, the industry is uh, is really becoming um, data driven rather than paper driven. Uh, the The loan process um, is processing. The loan process relies more on the processing of data rather than the reviewing of documents, and um, and that's that's a big change. Um, and it's impactful for a lot of reasons. Um, you know, it's impactful probably in an eco-friendly way in, in one way because the average loan file, um, when you're using a paper-driven process, the average loan file is about 500 pages. Um, using uh, data-oriented processes, you reduce uh, the size of the loan file quite a bit. Um, but it also represents a big change in how you actually handle the loan file. Um, when you're looking at a stack of documents, you're staring at it and comparing, and you want to make sure that everything is right. Um, when you're processing data, 
you're, you're looking to manage the exceptions. Um, the processing, uh, the loan is going to process and, and things are going to get verified, and it's when the system brings your attention to an exception that your people actually look at the exception and then address it. So um, in terms of uh, reducing the amount of labor involved, um, uh, the move to data processing is, is very efficient. It's a, it's a huge cost saver. Um, but you know, all of this couldn't be taking place without the help and the interest and the advancement of a lot of key market participants. And uh, Kevin, why don't you uh, share some thoughts on that? Yeah, th this has been the thing that I've that's excited me the most. Um, Jim, you and I, we attend all sorts of conferences. We get to hear uh, every association that we that we you know go to their annual conference or even state local associations. The the agendas of these conferences are jam packed full of content all related to you know these these electronic processes and e closing and digital mortgages and just the advancement. So it's about time you know we're starting to see all of all of these things begin to come together and it's because of these key market participants and, and that could be an association it could be you know public companies that are real stakeholders in one of these processes the um, there there's so many participants in the loan transaction right and the mortgage industry really is isn't any different there's so many different participants involved in that that we are what makes up that framework. And, and I say we, even as a service provider, we assist in the overall movement. And it's really exciting to see that everybody is getting behind this. We're encouraging it. We're, we're promoting it. Um, PRIA is the Property Records Industry Association. And they've been sort of promoting this and saying, look, we want, we want people to embrace electronic technologies more. So they've been telling county recorders, um, don't push back on documents just because you think it was, you know, signed electronically. There's other industry associations uh, like the Mortgage Bankers Association or even various uh, notary um, associations that are really getting engaged and, and, and pushing movement along. I think where we've probably seen the most movement within the last, oh, maybe year or two, um, there's, there must have been at least, you know, 12 to 24 new states to enact uh, notary legislation. So this is one of the critical pieces that has to be in place for this fully electronic process to work. And it's exciting. It's exciting that we're all starting to coordinate and really get the ball rolling with, um, you know, staying, staying coordinated. Um, so some of the real benefits of a digital mortgage or e-closing process, and this is more from, you know, the, the customer side or the consumer side, is convenience being the first one. We we attended a, a webinar from eOriginal, and they shared some cool stories. One was an example of a, a couple that had recently been vacationing in France, and they got their flight canceled, so they weren't able to, to get back in time for you know, a scheduled closing that they actually had on a property, but because of some available technology, they were actually able to conduct the closing through their phone. Um, and what a what a cool thought. Even uh, another story they gave was um, something of a, a person who was bedridden. They weren't able to be physically present at the, you know, what we call the traditional or typical closing. Uh, but again, through the use of technology, they were able to handle the the closing of the real estate transaction and things weren't delayed or stalled. So those are two cool examples. Uh, I'm sure there's many more, but of how convenience uh, really is a, is a factor in these sort of transactions. Another is speed. Um, when you're able to speed up, I, I shared this uh, with a friend of mine the other day, the overall um, time period that it takes to buy a home. Um, I think when I went through my own process, you know, six or seven years ago, I was going back and forth what felt like every single day, probably 13 times with information that I needed to get, uh, the appraisal needed to be done, the inspection was complete, what would we go back to, uh, the, the lender needs more of this information, and it, it was exhausting. So knowing that you're able to do things in a more uniform way, 
and knowing that it can potentially be uh, completed in a faster period of time, it allows people to get into the home that they want to get into quicker. Um, another obviously being security. Uh, there's all sorts of talk about this being such an important factor today, but that's the beauty of technology. The things that we use it for, um, certain data, you know, certain information can be captured. There can be a, a date and time stamp. There can be a log of all of the actions that occurred from the buyer and the seller and the other involved parties, which actually give an even greater sense of security throughout the whole process compared to the traditional uh, real estate transaction. And, and with that, transparency kind of goes hand in hand. It's a common, it's typically a common platform. You're combining multiple parties on one central application where information can be delivered back and forth. There's a higher level of communication and it gives everyone a greater sense of peace that this, that this, uh, that the biggest purchase of their life is going to go smoothly uh, and that everyone's on the same page. So very exciting uh, advancements that we're, we're glad to finally see come together, but those are some of the, some of the benefits of a digital mortgage process too. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to kick it back to Jim if he has any additional thoughts, but help us dive into some more of the, more of the specific benefits uh, with, with the digital mortgage process. Sure. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, yeah, now we look at the benefits of digital mortgage and e-closing for lenders uh, in title companies. And again, um, one of the biggest things is the ability to leverage data. Um, rather than accumulating documents, uh, you can hit uh, data sources to verify income, verify assets, and do property valuations. Um, it's faster, less labor-intensive, lower cost. Um, there's discipline within the system so that you can detect errors or things that don't seem right. If there are errors, they can be brought to the processor's um, attention. Um, you eliminate paper. And the other nice thing is that, um, you know, a 30-year mortgage is a 30-year proposition. So you are generating data that can be used for uh, the life cycle of that loan, uh, particularly as it moves into servicing. Um, again, speed, faster loan processing. Um, not only are you reducing costs, but you're also able to um, shorten the timeline from application to closing and delivery into the secondary market if you're selling that loan. So a um, lot of benefits there. Um, if you're closing loans in 30 days, you only have to manage pipeline risk, you know, interest rate risk for 30 days, you know, 40 days rather than 60 to 75 days. Um, and then also, uh, and we'll get it into this a little bit more, um, if, you can, uh, if you can make loans in 30 days and you're using a warehouse line, that means you can turn over your warehouse line faster and you can leverage it and leverage your, your capital to make more loans. Um, improved loan quality. Um, again, the, the digital process enforces the discipline so that you're going to root out any potential errors. Um, oftentimes it's going to eliminate the possibility of hand, human hand key errors. And um, so you're going to end up with um, better, tighter loans. And this is, this is good in a couple of ways. One, I think it's going to eliminate or reduce the potential for a loan buyback. And two, um, it's going to reduce the amount of post-closing cleanup um, that many lenders are engaged in um, even today. So um, we've seen some, some discussions, we've heard some discussions about um, how much are people actually reducing costs using digital processes versus uh, paper-based processes. And some of the early studies um, indicate it can be anywhere from $220 to $400 per loan file. So um, pretty big amount of savings. Um, and then we get to uh, warehouse lines. Um, maybe not as important if you're um, a depository institution, but as we know, there's plenty of non-bank lenders out there that use a warehouse line uh, to fund loans. 
And um, if you're if you're doing digital mortgage with e notes, e notes, and e closings, um, you're able to turn faster on your warehouse line, particularly if there's e notes. Uh, you can get the e note to the as soon as the e note is electronically executed, um, it's authenticated and it can be shipped, um, and it can be transmitted electronically. And um, the loan package can be uh, transmitted electronically to the investor, which just means you're going to sell and fund faster and get a quicker turn on your warehouse line. Um, in fact, there was uh, a study where they were saying that uh, the dwell time, I, I'm not a warehouse expert, but for those of you that deal with warehouses, uh, the dwell time uh, could be reduced potentially from 10 days to two days uh, if you're doing e-closings with, with e-notes. Um, okay, better loan sale execution. Um, sure, if you have an e-note and you have an electronic package and you can get it to the investor uh, faster, um, you can move up the sale on, on your, your loan um, a few days and that's going to translate into better price. Um, but maybe even more impactful, um, going back to what I was saying earlier, if you can um, uh, take an application and close in 30 days and sell into, uh, say, a June pool, rather than take that application and close in 60 days and sell into a July pool, you're going to get a better price for June than you will for July. So you're going to get a better uh, loan execution there. And also, it's just less time to manage um, the interest rate risk when you're, when you're hedging your pipeline. Um, customer satisfaction. Well, I think, that's, I think all of us that do business want to have happy customers. There's nothing better than a happy customer. Uh, they're happy. They tell their friends. They tell their family. They tell other people. And that helps your business. So um, we all want to have happy customers. Competitive edge, we're seeing that folks that are, the lenders that are adopting early um, are getting an edge in the marketplace. Um, I think the most obvious example is Quicken and their Rocket Mortgage. They're having a lot of success with that. And then lastly, um, it's just a good experience for all the parties involved, um, digital and e-closing. And maybe it's not 100%, but it could be, you know, 80% digital or 60% digital or you know, mostly in e-closing, but not all, all the way in e-closing, but to whatever degree uh, that you're doing it, um, it does improve experience um, for the lender, for the buyer, for the title agent, and for the real estate agent. We're going to talk a bit about e-closing, and I'm going to discuss what we've seen up to this point with the four types of e-closings. Um, or, or really closings, the first one being the traditional type where the closing occurs in person. 100% um, of the paper documents are wet signed. Um, even the, the notarization is in wet, wet ink, right? And then it, the, the note that's produced is, is done so traditionally. So this is all what we're familiar with. But second, and this is where we've begun to see a bit of adoption of these electronic processes, is the closing still happening in person with this hybrid -y closing um, and not, uh, excuse me, all non-notarized documents are electronic and e-signed. So we're seeing some advancement there. All notarized documents are still wet signed and notarized uh, in person, but then they are able to be, uh, the note is able to be produced electronically. So we're, we're seeing a bit of a shift right there. And then up top on the right, um, a new type is e-closing with in-person e-notarization. So you might ask, what in the world does that mean? Um, we use the acronym IPEN, so remember that if you can. But this is an in-person, face-to-face closing, and all documents related to the closing are, are electronic. They're actually e-signed and e-notarized, um, even the note, and then the recording of the documents are done so electronically. So um, this is one type of e-notarization that's occurring currently. And then after that, this e-closing process where there's a remote online notarization, that acronym we use is RON or RON. This is where the assigning occurs remotely via like a, a real-time two-way AV connection. So an audio video, almost like a webcam. Think of it that way. 
Um, so the notary public would appear before the webcam and verify the signature took place that way. And then again, all documents are electronically signed and, and notarized. The notes produced electronically and, and as well uh, because of the, the maturity of e-recording, um, the electronic recording can happen. So those are four examples of what we've seen up to this point. And uh, Jim, if you can uh, dive into a few more details of where we're seeing each of these types, um, give us some insight as to where things are happening. Sure, thanks. Um, well, if you focus on the uh, the legend to the right with uh, the colors there, I'm going to start from the bottom with the orange. Um, currently, the RON closings, which is uh, involves remote online notarization, are taking place in Virginia and Montana. Um, Virginia uh, law is a little different than Montana. Virginia's law allows its notaries to remotely notarize a document any place in the country. Um, Montana limits its notaries to doing remote online notarization in Montana. So that, that's a big difference. Um, if we move to the gray, you'll see that uh, that signifies that Texas and Nevada have passed or enacted RON legislation, and they're actually going to start doing uh, RON notarization July 1st. So their, their law goes effective July 1st. Um, then we move to the navy blue. That indicates the states where you can do IPEN notarizations. Um, quite a few states there. Uh, some have had long-standing laws like North Carolina and Pennsylvania. Uh, other states, um, and this is that momentum that Kevin was talking about earlier, um, have recently put laws uh, into place um, that allow IPEN, um, including uh, Arkansas and Nebraska and Kansas. Um, and then the teal shows where you can do um, a hybrid closing. Um, again, that's where you're going to, uh, you can e-sign uh, the non-notarized documents but those documents like a deed and a mortgage which need notarization are still being signed uh, in wet ink as paper documents. And, um, and then the note uh, is, is an e-note. So um, we've been talking quite a bit about RON, and while there's been um, a lot of activity towards I-10, there's also been even more, I think, momentum Towards, towards RON. And um, again, RON, RON fits in nicely for the e-closing platforms um, that are out there. Um, so let's, again, uh, let's look at this map here. Red shows the states that are actively doing RON, which is um, Virginia and Montana, okay? Teal shows the states where RON will soon go into effect, uh, many of those states uh, in 2019. Okay. Uh, Navy Blue shows the states in which RON has been introduced or is being studied. So um, it's, it's, we are seeing um, a lot of recent uh, momentum amongst the states uh, towards uh, these remote online notarizations. So this is where really the rubber meets the road, acceptance of e-closed loans. And, um, you know, it would be nice to say that you could just go out and universally in any state uh, do a digital mortgage and e-close that loan, um, but we can't say that yet. We're, we're moving there, um, but we're just not all the way there yet. And, and it really is dependent on all the parties in the transaction. Um, I guess it really starts with the lender. Is, is the lender set up to do digital mortgage and e-closing? Um, you know, more and more lenders are adopting it, but there's a lot that they have to put into place. Title insurance. Um, can you get title insurance for this e-closed loan if you go ahead and do it? Um, again, the title industry is, is very strongly engaged in this, um, <clears throat> but they have to do what they feel comfortable doing. Um, and then if the loan is going to be sold to an aggregator or an investor, will, will that entity accept an e-closed loan? 
And then you'd have to look at the Fannie and Freddie or Jenny or the Federal Home Loan, Home Loan Bank. Um, what is their acceptance? Will they accept an e-closed e loan that has been e-closed, you know, in that state? And then, you know, you have to also look at the state and county. Um, will that, you know, can and what does that state law um, allow for in terms of an e-closing and um, the county? Will, will they e-record it? Um, so a lot of factors to look at. But let's, let's run down the rest of the list here. Both Fannie and Freddie will accept e-notes in all states, okay? Uh, they'll accept IPEN loans in 20 states, 22 effective July 1st when Texas and Nevada go live. Um, Fannie and Freddie will accept RON loans in 11 states presently, uh, 13 states effective July 1st. Uh, Jenny May is not as far uh, along as Fannie and Freddie, um, but they um, are actually publishing a 2020 plan in which they're going to outline and sort of detail their support of a digital mortgage. The Federal Home Loan Bank has been um, kind of the latest to embrace digital. Um, and to this point, they don't accept e-notes. Um, but there's been some encouraging and fruitful discussions with Federal Home Loan Banks. And so they, we can say that they are actively exploring digital. Uh, but getting back to title companies, because as, as we said before, if you're going to e-close a loan, you've got to make sure you can get title insurance. Uh, Stewart Title recently announced that they will insure title on RON loans in 11 states, 13 effective July 1st. And WestCore uh, will insure title in 20 states on RON loans, uh, moving to 22 on July 1st. Well, we're going to talk a bit about the widespread adoption of e-recording. Uh, we alluded to this a little bit earlier. Uh, there was even a question about, look, are you encouraging all the counties to adopt e-recording? And you'll see here from our map, 46 out of the 50 states in the country have already adopted e-recording. There's, I believe the number is close to 1,800 counties now that have adopted the e-recording process. Now, that's only half of the counties across the country, but that half um, captures over 80% of the U.S. population now lives within a county that has implemented e-recording. So we can see that this is truly a, uh, a refined process. You know, we often refer to recording as the last mile of the transaction. Uh, we also refer to recording as sort of the, the spine of the transaction, that without the documents being put on official public record, you know, what, what good has come of it yet? There's still risk. There's still liability that it needs to be put on the public record. Uh, so you can see CSC is an e-recording provider. You know, we've stayed engaged in the advancements and, and the movements of all of these participating parties. You know, we are, you know, you know say it, say it uh, as the tail end of it, but CSC is involved in this complete process and, and we're excited. And, and with all the hype and buzz on how technology is, is shaping these new processes, e-recording really can be the one piece that is safe and predictable and established and the one e-process that you might feel most comfortable saying, look, I need to dive into this. I need to begin adopting electronic processes. Well, let me start with e-recording. Yeah, it's on the tail end of the transaction, but um, this is the most mature. You know, this has been in place for a while. It's proven. We've done this for two decades. So I, I hope that everyone feels that sort of uh, confidence that this is a good place to begin. And here's some other values of, of e-recording with CSC. Uh, one of the things that our clients love about our system that allows you to record documents is the faster processing speed. So you essentially have an executed document, and rather than using FedEx or UPS or the Postal Service or a courier, um, you're able to now bypass that and utilize the system to, within an instant, electronically deliver the document directly to the recording office. So it's efficient in that way where 
it speeds up recordation times, but even in the sense where uh, you want to reduce rejections. I can't tell you how many stories I've heard of document submitters that have sent something through the mail or used a courier all to have the document rejected for some reason, and it took them weeks to get notified of that rejection. E-recording streamlines the delivery and the return process, so you're notified as soon as the document's been processed by the county. Um, obviously, there's uh, the highest levels of security um, involved in this process. Every action within our system, when a document is submitted electronically, it's date and time stamped. So we have an entire log that you're able to you know, utilize as an organization just to reference, hey, who's doing what and when was this actually submitted so you can keep track of things on your side and manage business processes. Obviously, there's, there's less vendor risk rather than you putting documents in a third party's hands and somebody riding their bike down to the county office because sometimes it works like that. Um, you don't have to um, realize that risk anymore. The documents can always stay in your physical possession. And then obviously you have a single system. That's where there's transparency. As an organization, you're able to archive in an automated way every document that you've ever recorded electronically. You have a platform now that you can go to to pull an archive and a record of that. So those are some of the extra values in using CSC for the e-recording services. But I think we want to uh, take just some more time here and kind of go through some of the questions. Folks, I um, want to just thank Kevin and Jim again for the information that they've shared and for all to all of you for participating with your questions. Uh, we appreciate you joining us, and we hope to see you next time.